This and every edition of the Solid Podcast is brought to you by Etched, also known as Etched Aloha or Etched LLC. Etched is a premier laser engraving service here in Honolulu, Hawaii that can customize just about anything. If you have something you need laser cut, laser etched, or laser engraved, please give Doc, I think I know that guy, give Doc a call at 808-270-1976, 808-270-1926, yes, <laughs> I almost forgot the phone number, and uh, you know, also you can check it out online at etchedaloha.com, also brought to you by our wonderful premier sponsor, the Law Offices of Marcus Landsberg, our Landsberg Law. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need a good lawyer, make sure you give Marcus a call at 808-230-7419. That's 808-230-7419. Thank you so much, Marcus, for sponsoring the Solid Podcast. Aloha, everybody, and welcome to the Solid Podcast. I am your host, Doc Rock, and we are here with episode six. Yes, episode six, we're here. Uh... Man, it's been kind of a crazy, crazy week. Uh, first and foremost, uh, today, news came out that Senator John McCain has a brain cancer uh, situation that he's going through right now. And, you know, I'm not a big fan. I think most of us uh, humans right now are not big fans of the Republican Party. But all politics aside, here's a war hero, a great statesman one of the rare Republicans that seems to act like he has a soul. And as an ex-vet, I definitely want to say, number one, sir, thank you for your service. Number two, sir, be a continual fighter, the fighter that you were trained to be. And I hope you pull through with a quick and speedy recovery. Godspeed, Captain McCain. Also, yeah, those in Hawaii, we all know, people in the mainland may have seen this on the news, but uh, we had a terrible structure fire uh, a couple days back at the uh, Marco Polo condominium here in Honolulu, not too far from Waikiki, about a little less than a mile away. And uh, unfortunately, we lost three lives that day. And so first and foremost, my condolences out to the friends and family of the people that lost their lives in that structure fire. Also, my condolences and uh, you know, thoughts and prayers and, you know, positive vibes and all of that goes out to people who were affected. And what I mean by that is current understanding is somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 units were affected by this fire. And, and we're talking people like losing their memories, like losing things, cherished possessions and everything. So naturally we're great that they got out okay, but man, just the thought of losing all your stuff. It's uh, that's pretty heavy. So I will put a link in the show notes. The show notes, of course, are always found at solid.fm. You just click on the episode and right there on the post, you'll find the show notes. I will put a link to a uh, uh, information on how you can help. If you want to help people affected by the Marco Polo structure fire, I will put that information out there so that you can follow up. And uh, yeah, please, let's... Uh, Let's all pull through. That's what Hawaii is about. Those of you guys in the mainland, we, we tend to take care of each other and support each other like that. That's the aloha spirit. I didn't want to let the, the tragedy of Marco Polo go by without first mentioning, are you ready? You know, let's think about this. Like we... We see these things happen and we get sad and, you know, we we together and we, you know, send out our, our thoughts and prayers. You know, that's the, the famous uh, comment. And, you know, but do you go in your cabinet in the kitchen or in the bathroom, garage, bedroom, wherever, and pull out your fire extinguishers and check them? If you haven't, I suggest you should. Um, you can take them to your local fire department to have them checked. Um, here in Hawaii, there's also a place called uh, Safety Systems. You can take them to Safety Systems to have them checked and refreshed if they need to be refreshed or recharged. Whatever the proper terminology is escapes me at the moment. But um, please, please don't be in a situation when you're not ready. Take these things and, uh, you know, 
if you like me, I have a lot of electronics and I love my electronics. I don't want anything to happen to them. Go get yourself a Halon fire extinguisher. Those are designed to spray on electronic and machinery without screwing them up. Um, make sure you have one, you know, set up for the way you cook. If you have a, a gas stove and say a deep fryer, you want to make sure you have the proper fire extinguisher. Again, have these conversations with your fire people. And if you haven't been trained on how to use a fire extinguisher, Again, talk to your fire station guys. These guys will help you. They will show you what to do. Um, I just thought about it. Uh, my niece Emma's eight. Next time she's over, I'm going to teach her how to use a fire extinguisher. I myself have sprayed one in the past because we had to learn how to properly use them in the military. And I might have been a little bit of a derelict when I was a kid. So I have used fire extinguishers before. Um, but again, please go get your stuff checked out. Um, also... Make sure you discuss with your family your readiness plan. You know, like, what do you do? How do you get out? Where do you meet? Uh, things like that. I, I live on a, on a high-rise condo as well. Uh, luckily, our building is newer, so it is retrofitted with uh, fire suppression systems. But being on the 16th floor with arthritis and two knees, I am not running down any steps. So, repel rope. Trained to know how to use it. Maybe uh, if you live in Hawaii, go to Volcanic Rock Gym and talk to Justin and ask him to teach you how to repel. So in case you need to know how to do it, you can just tie off on the balcony or tie off on something heavy in the house and go over the side, brother. <laughs> you know, it sounds crazy, but it's probably much better than trying to run down many, many flights of stairs when everyone else is trying to run down many, many flights of stairs. It, it may be an option. So give yourself an, an extra out if possible. Also, big one, hurricane season. Hurricane season is upon us. Uh, Hawaii, we get lots and lots of hurricanes. And, and I just thought I would run over real quick. You know, everyone, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a joke in Hawaii, but it's not funny. And it's, it's peculiar that we joke about these things, but it definitely is not funny. Every single time that the uh, hurricane body of the government why my brain is missing i can't even think about it right now nhc which is a div division of noaa the national hurricane center uh when the national hurricane center puts out a warning the first thing that happens everyone runs to costco and gets toilet paper water spam it always sells out and then people get extremely butt hurt when the people that own these establishments adjust prices according to supply and demand. Now, some people say that's bad. Some people say that's business. I'm kind of on the that's business side, right? Like, and I guess I can say that because I come from a position of, again, I'm ex-military, so I'm properly trained. I have no less than two, three, four, five, six, 40 gallons of water in my house ready to go uh all potable aka drinkable i have case of spam unopened i recycle it every two years i have four boxes of mres which is meals ready to eat uh the civilian versions of these things can be purchased online again i'll put links in the in the chat room but uh you can get mres even as a civilian like i i have my food i have my water i have my toilet paper I have a generator, I have extra batteries, like I'm prepped, I, my kit is legit. I have a go bag, do you have a go bag? Maybe you should have a go bag. A go bag means I can grab this bag, get and go. So if it's time to go to some kind of shelter or something of that nature, Hawaii gets tsunamis, Hawaii gets hurricanes, we get really crazy rains. And in the mainland, you know, you guys are told, by uh, FEMA and the Hurricane Center to be prepped for roughly three days. I think that's what they say. Folks, we're on an island. We're different. We need at least seven to 10 days worth of food. I Last I checked, I'm prepped for 10. Uh, and I'm thinking about moving that to 14. It sounds crazy, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's things that you can do and learn. And again, I'll put links out there. But for right now, let's just run over a couple things you need to always have ready. I kind of wrote this here on the screen, so let me read these off to you. Um, 
first thing, one of the most important things is have all your reference information together. You can put these in something waterproof, fireproof, uh, laminated, you know, a nice steel box, which you can pick up from Costco, Office Max, Office Depot, Amazon. Again, if I find one, I'll pop the link in the, in the show notes. But you want to have all your emergency management office information, like where is the tsunami center? Where is the hurricane center? Where is the earthquake center? Right. You want numbers to all your city law enforcement. These should be somewhere posted where you can get by them. Now, back in the day, we had phone and we had the book. You had the yellow pages. All this information was right there. Most of us don't have landlines anymore. And because of that, most of us don't even have all of this stuff saved in your phone. It should all be saved in your phone. Right. You want information to your uh, county public safety fire rescue. If you have state, city and county, city, town, government, like put all that in there. Information to your local hospitals, local utilities, Red Cross, your TV stations, radio stations, and all of your property insurance, you know, agents and whatnot. Have all of that stuff ready, just in case. Now, next thing you need to do is have yourself a disaster supply kit. And you might want to think of building multiple ones and putting them, you know, around in your situation. Now, once you build one for yourself, put that together and make sure that, yeah, your brother-in-law's a dick, so is mine, but let's go help him. Go build one, you know. Uh, go show him. I'm joking, Tony. You're not a dick. I love you, brother. <laughs> go build a kit and, and show them how to do it. Like, somebody in your family has to be that dude. And once you have it set up, make sure everybody has one. Uh, you know, help them build something similar. And if not your family members, your neighbors, you know. I always tease that most people don't even know their neighbors. I have my name and number to all my neighbors that are close by me. It's important. Uh, the days of like the weird people next door, that, that doesn't really work anymore. It's kind of important that we know who our nearest neighbors are. Okay. Now, another thing that's important is that you have your emergency plans together. Um, and, you know, that's talking with your family, like, where are we going to go? What happens if we're not going to be at home? Uh, the last time we had a tsunami watch, many people had to go up the Pali, which is a relatively high mountain here. Again, for the people not listening from Hawaii, you know, get get that stuff together and, and make these plans. Um, if you own your own business, you know, make sure your work people are, are covered with this. Make sure that you ask your you know your kids at school like what are they learning at school like what is the daycare's emergency plans uh, what's the school plans uh pet people yeah what are you doing with your pets you know like have all of this stuff on lock you know you need information for center for disease control and prevention in case of a zombie outbreak i know that sounds crazy but probably our next biggest disaster will be some sort of health oriented disaster so we'll be ready and i'm not a prepper, like those people on TV kind of creep me out. I'm not that bad. I'm talking about basic necessities and no, I'm not, you know, thinking the Russians or North Korea is coming to get us or anything crazy like that. But we do live in a hurricane place. Uh, there's volcanoes, there's tsunamis, heavy rains, a lot, you know, earthquakes, all of the above. So I'm just saying, let's be ready. So the basic things that you need in a kit like this, of course, you need one gallon of water per person, per day and this includes drinking and sanitation some of the people that survive disasters when you look at all the documentaries that are out there about Katrina and that they were getting sick from not being able to clean things correctly and they were getting sick from dehydration imagine that you're in a place flooded with water like literally water up in your keister but you're dehydrating it happens uh you need they say a three-day supply Hawaii says like 7 to 10. Again, I'm going to push mine out to 14. I'm going to go double check everything. Make sure you have a hand crank radio. Super easy to get. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, your bank and AAA or whatever, they give them out free when you sign up. But uh, make sure you get that. Something that also has a tone alarm. And what that means is you can crank it. You can listen to the emergency channels and all of that. But there's also on the red one that I have, there's a button you can press that acts as a beacon. It's like an LED beacon that lasts kind of long and it makes a noise like yep, yep, yep. Uh, you see them in the movies when a fireman goes down kind of thing. They have them built into their suit. Uh, the, the radio I have has that on there too. Um, flashlights and extra batteries, that kind of goes unsaid, but 
Yeah, many people do it. I have a uh, shake flashlight and a hand crank flashlight and a bunch of LED flashlights because the batteries last forever. Basic first aid kit. You need a whistle. Uh, you need a... This is one I didn't think of. Sorry, I went loud in the mic for a second. Uh, my buddy Tyson and I were just talking the other day. And I was like, man, I have like five dust masks in the shop for sanding and etching or when I'm lasering something really stink like leather and plastic or whatnot. But I don't have a 3M respirator filter upstairs. My The one I have is a 3M 6300, I believe is the right answer, or 6100, um, lows 45 bucks. And this goes down to like point something something micron, really, really small. I think I'm gonna go buy a couple of those to put them upstairs in the house because, you know, like I think in a situation like the Marco Polo thing, like if I were there or in a situation like that and I had my mask that I used just for doing my woodworking, that would cool the smoke inhalation. Like that would stop that because it's designed to stop that. Um, so again, not very expensive. And you think a family of four, 130 bucks, and you got four of these masks. They're the ones with the big pink joints on the side and a hard plastic face, and it doesn't, like, get wet. So I wouldn't just use the typical uh, Japanese I'm sick mask. I would go get a legitimate word working mask, something that can handle paint and solvents and burning and stuff like that. Um, you want to have, you know, uh, moist towelettes as they call it garbage bag plastic ties you know things so you can do your personal sanitation and one that i didn't think about and so i have to make adjustments is no i don't have a rinse and things in my first aid kit for turning off the the water and the gas um yeah that's kind of a good idea the last one that they bring up a lot is uh you need a manual can opener p38 if you don't know what a p38 is it's a little skinny skinny military one uh they're really cheap go on ebay and buy yourself a p38 but you know like it's it's crazy the the cell phone chargers we we all have them because pokemon let's let's be serious but i probably have four right now that are dead <laughs> so uh make it a point to charge them but know where they are and check them. If you haven't used it for a while, recharge it. Like give yourself a date on the calendar to recharge the stuff. Matter of fact, give yourself a date on the calendar to check all of your things. Now, again, I'm going to make it a point to go through my list and reprep everything and have everything ready. But with hurricane season on the rise and, you know, just global warming, doing all kinds of weird things to the weather, this is probably the time where we really, you know, stop thinking of it as I'll get around to it and let's get ourselves actually prepped. And one thing that you may not think of while you're prepping and say you over prep, you actually might be able to help someone out who didn't. So, yeah, that's that Aloha spirit, right? That's the thing that we do. We take care of each other. We help each other out. So I'm hoping through the information that I just, you know, ran through really, really quickly. And again, I'll put links and I'll, you know, show you whatever information I can. So I'll make like a little post so we can have this. But, you know, you get this uh, checklist. You can download from FEMA.org. I believe they have a checklist. Or you can go to the National Hurricane Center website on uh, NOAA.gov. And, uh, you know, go through this stuff. Like, check check yourself <laughs> that's i should stop laughing but uh yeah check it like see if you got everything ready and i'm actually going to go harass the living crap out of my friends to make sure that they're good i i don't even know if these guys are ready but i'm gonna ask them you know waterproof matches you know like paper and pencil things to keep the kids occupied you know uh a bottle of bleach. Bleach would be very important because a lot of people don't know. You can boil a little water. You can put like, uh, uh, I think it's like three or four drops in a gallon. And then you can make it, you know, a little bit easier for you to uh, clean things. And uh, you can actually even, with the right chlorination mix, hypochlorite mix, you can actually drink it. So, yeah, 
it's it's actually time to stop making fun of the preppers and let's get some of the prepping together. I know this has been a little different from our normal version of the solid podcast, but in light of uh, the current events, I thought it was due for a quick rundown. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please send them to me. Um, if you have any recommendations, if I miss something, if you work for a company that helps people do this, if you are a fireman, whatever you send the information to me, I will get it back out to people. Like, you know, there might be six of you guys listening, but if four of you guys build a readiness kit, then I did my job for this week. You know, my, my military training did not go to waste if I could help out only a little bit of you guys. So thank you so much for, for listening. And again, you can find all the show notes. They will be on solid.fm. Please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any more of my great episodes like this one. <laughs> Please leave me a review. Write me a message on iTunes, uh, star review, whatever you got. Please do that. It helps out an awful lot. Share this with your friends. And I have been Doc Rock. I am still Doc Rock. And I'll see you again soon. Uh, I might be doing an episode in the next couple of days. You might be double up back to back. I'm just trying to get a hold of my buddy Spencer from Sudo Crew because I, I just want to see what he's up to. Catch up with my old friend. So that he might be next up on the Solid Podcast. Once again, thank you for listening to the Solid Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Solid Pod or Twitter at The Solid Pod or Facebook at Solid Podcast. So please send us MF, uh, please send us some feedback. Let us know what's going on and we'll see you again soon. Mahalo and aloha. Once again, this episode of the Solid Podcast brought to you by the law offices of Marcus Landsberg at Landsberg Law. And again, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to find yourself a good lawyer, make sure you give Marcus a call at 230-7419, 230-7419, and you can find him on the internet at Hawaii Lawyer. That's at Mark Hawaii Lawyer. Also, a big shout out and thank you to Etched, also known as Etched LLC, Hawaii's premier laser engraving service. If you need anything customized, just give Doc a call.